Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Han, and today we're gonna to talk about behind the shots. In behind the shots, I take some scenes from my short film and break down the thinking, and creative process, and some techniques that involved. So in today's behind the shots, let's take a look at how did I push the Unreal Engine Lumen to the limit in this rainy night scene. Batman was probably the most beautiful and poetic movie that came out last year in my opinion. I loved how they portrayed the rainy night city of Gotham. The lighting and the color was so well art directed and stunning. So I use it as the main reference to try to capture the essence of a rainy night in Unreal. So as always, please make sure you stay to the end for the bonus tip. Matrix demo was the perfect setup base for what I needed in this shot in terms of location. The challenge is how to make it not look like a marketplace asset. We'll talk about that in a bit. I needed a spot that has enough depth in the street for objects layering, also not to show two repetitive buildings windows that looks artificial. If we observe the movie screenshot closely, they all have a great depth in every location, both in the physical layout and also in the lighting. So that would be the general idea of the location that I'm looking for. Okay, I think this corner will do. Even though the building or street doesn't look uh, particularly interesting yet, we can always set dress up later. And keep in mind, I always look for opportunities to tell stories in the environment. And it can be simple as some trash cans on the sidewalk, a parking side in the background. An audience might not read the text or read the signs clearly yet, but having them in the scene will help you to ground the render and make it more believable. Okay, now let's bring the traffic in. Driving in Unreal is so much fun. I feel the Matrix demo vehicle setup actually has a lot more subtlety and nuances motion and then the template one, especially in the suspensions. If you plug your controllers in via a PlayStation or Xbox controller, you can actually use it to use the analog control to control the vehicle a lot more precisely. Check out this short video I put out on how to set it up and have fun driving. So the uh, animation recording was done to the preset matrix car rig. And uh, if we want to use a customized model or a customized car, you can just simply rig the wheels or the parts that are moving. You don't have to rig the whole car and uh, transfer the wheel animation from the recorded skeletal mesh to your customized rig. And in terms of the camera, I wanted to keep it a very subtle and a controlled motion, and but sells the feeling that if as if the car is pulling over right in front of you. Um, so a small push should just do it. And if you want to know more about the camera trick, check out my last video about how to make CG camera more realistic. Now let's shut off all the existing lighting to see. You can see the emissive material from the windows is contributing a lot to the overall Lumen GI steel. So instead of going into the each material to tone them down, uh, I was just gonna bring down the camera exposure globally. And now let's go back to the reference. There's almost no strong directional light in any rainy scene in the movies or in the render. Um, because the sun's blocked by the cloud, but we can still keep a very diffuse light there just to add a little bit more to the ambient so it's not a pitch black. And another biggest thing in any rainy night look is that uh, you can tell all the light sources are diffused and uh, almost a little bit glowy, either uh, diffused by the rain or the water on the lens, uh, especially in the reflections. So. Let's first bring in the road surface a little bit less rough, basically crank up the reflection a little bit in the material. And we can see the reflection are starting to look a bit more interesting because um, it's now picking up all the colors from the surrounding light. And for this shot, I want to make the car either backlit or silhouetted. The dropping of volumetric fog, I want to use the fog to actually um, shape the car and just to separate it from the surroundings. 
Next thing, let's to break down the boring sidewalk a little bit. We can drop in some storefronts from the uh, Kibash. But remember, we're not going to see those stores clearly. We're not gonna read what uh, each store is. So it doesn't really matter what store we put them in, um, but think them more for uh, lighting opportunities and how can they show colors in the reflection. And more on the silhouette of the store, if we pick up a little bit in the fog, uh, how the silhouette's gonna look and just pick something that is more interesting. So uh, now let's drop in some extra lights to push the uh, those kind of stylized the noir contrasty look. And for this specific scene, when I'm dropping in the light, I'm paying attention to the color that it adds to the fog. So I use a slightly different color for each light to make the gradient more interesting, but obviously not on the different you know side of the spectrum. And for some lights, I actually even put a texture on them to add even more variation to the hue. Uh, oh, here's the bunch of the emissive cards with textures like uh, street photos. I just put them off camera or hide inside the fog. And they can be either read as a billboard or uh, some defocused uh, storefront light. And because Lumen GI actually picks up the emissive material, so uh, their color will get contributed back to the overall global GI and it creates some really interesting reflection and the subtleness is just hard to get sometimes with a solid light color. And don't forget to pay attention to the overall image and check if it has a nice gradient overall. That's basically my way to avoid uh, creating a flat image. So always check for gradient either left to right or inward outward so in this case it's more of like inward outward gradients and uh, um, use extra light to layer the buildings and the layer the objects for example this building right here the light comes behind it and it separates um, the foreground building with the background so the uh, screen right this whole chunk doesn't look like a, a black blob it has layers and uh, what else we can do? Okay, let's later on add, uh, we can add some uh, red tail light to make the uh, color palette even a bit more interesting because right now we are sitting somewhere around this warm orange and cool uh, blue on the street. So sprinkle a little bit of red tail light to just to make the image a little bit more interesting, but not to shift in too far away from the main color theme. So, okay, the general look is getting there. Let's now crank up the rain. Um, if we study the reference carefully, we can try our best to capture uh, the essence of the rainy look, like what makes the look rainy. So first thing, if you'll notice the sidewalk right now, it's still a bit of a, a repetitive, a simple, it doesn't look wet enough. So we want to break that up a little bit and introduce some puddles so we can feel the water is accumulating uh, on the sidewalk. And the second thing is obviously the ring drop lines. And the ring drop lines is especially obvious or more pronounced around the hotspots or light sources. And don't forget the ripples in the ground. I think the ripples in the ground probably sells the wetness more than the drop lines. So having those small ripples moving and expanding, you know, very subtly on the edge of the frame, uh, it can really add more life to the uh, lifeless concrete uh, of the sidewalk. And to create that rain material, that consistent ring look, I use the rain material from the marketplace as a starting point. And it gives some great animated normal material function, which you can then integrate it into your main shader, to the car shader, to the pavement shader, etc. But in this case, for the ground, it's like consists of uh, hundreds of geos, so it would be a nightmare to go through every shader. So what I did is I just duplicated the geo and lifted up a little bit and made a transparent material with only the ring ripples. And because the ripples is in the normal, and if we piping a, a fake sort of rasterized the refraction, it can create some broken reflection look, but still has the ripples there. And also I added some splash element just to break up the smooth reflection just a little bit more. And the same thing with the car material, just integrate the ring drop uh, trail material function from the marketplace into the car shader. You can add it to the last step because the water, you know, all the, sh all the coated shader happens at the bottom and the water happens on the top. All right, last step, the ambient, add some fog, mist, smoke, whispers, anything you can to make the audience feel the air 
inside the scene will help to increase the uh, realism but keep them subtle and always make sure that the wind direction is consistent throughout every um, sort of ambient source that is one mistake I see a lot of people make and that can actually small detail can either break or make a shot Bo and bonus tip so when you have a moving light source and the volumetric fog in the scenes sometimes you will notice the light source will have this strobing effect in the fog and there are actually a couple of bars that can tweak uh, or increase the uh, refresh rate of the volumetric fog and i pack them in a blueprint uh, you can just have this one toggle i call it a cinematic fog it does come with a heavier performance cost and um, but for cinematic purpose it should be fine and you can download the blueprint here to try it out the last step is grading uh, grading i actually consider is more of a preference thing it's like a color filter so i don't think i will cover in full length in this video um, but one thing i want to mention is i added a bit more glow and bloom in nuke um, and stretch them um, vertically to sell the wetness on the lens look Okay, so that wraps up the workflow for this shot. Uh, but the principles like lighting and environment storytelling can be shared across different contexts as well. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. And if there's any other topic you want me to dive deeper or break down more, leave a comment and let me know. If you haven't, please subscribe. There's a lot more coming on this channel. And don't forget to check out the demo reel I put out lately. Sit back, relax, enjoy.